Good morning, everyone. We are going to be starting in another four minutes. We still have some parents um, coming in, so we are just allowing them a few minutes, and then we're going to be starting. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We are thankful that God has granted us another privilege that we can come together to celebrate his goodness and celebrate his mercy. His name is worthy to be praised. And I'm going to see that you're going to be seated for maybe an hour or so. I'm going to invite you to stand as we enter into worship. The word of the Lord says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and in his courts with praise. We're going to blend our voices together as we sing this praise chorus. I will praise you, Lord with every breath I take. I will praise you, Lord, with every breath that I take. I will praise you, Lord, this promise I'll make. And if eternity end and start all over again, even then, I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord, with every breath that I take. I will praise you, Lord, this promise I'll make. And in eternity end and start all over again. Even then, I will praise you. Bow your heads as we look to the Lord in prayer. Our school's chaplain, Sister Jem, will come and lead us in prayer. The Lord be with you. 
Let us pray. Father God, it is indeed a wonderful thing to praise you. And as we come this morning, Father, we want to thank you for your love and kindness, your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so much, that you sent your son to die for us so that we can become your children. And Lord, as we come as a school family this morning to welcome, to congratulate this wonderful ceremony, we pray, gracious God, that we will recognize your presence with us. We will recognize your goodness, your love, your protection, your provision. And so, Lord, we come and we pray, gracious God, that we will give to you the honor, the praise, and the thanksgiving that you justly deserve. We thank you for your school. We thank you for the founder. We thank you, Lord, for his response to your call to establish this institution, not just for Anglicans, but for all children that will need an education. And so, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you have been journeying with us from its inception, and your promise is that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. So we thank you, gracious God, for this family, for the new members of this family who are here this morning, for their parents, for their guardians, for those who have encouraged them, who have stood with them amidst the challenges of COVID-19. And gracious God, we are confident that you will remain with us. We pray, oh God, for our principal, our vice principals, our coordinators. We thank you, God, for our teachers. And most importantly, we thank you for these students whom you have blessed us with. And so, gracious God, we want to commend ourselves, past students association, the parent teachers association, the board of management, the ancillary, the administrative staff. And in the true spirit of Glenmuir, we will continue to be a flame burning with the zeal for truth. Be with us now, inspire, encourage all parents and students that they will continue to do their best knowing that you are with us. And so we give you honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. May we say the family prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The theme that we will focus on for the coming school year is a very important one. It is one that I believe comes against the background of the psalmist when he says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For our God is a great God. And he is a great king above all gods. And within his hands are the, the places of the earth. And in fact, everything belongs to him. 
the theme ready to rise. Can we all say that together? Ready to? Oh, I want you sound like an excited Shelley and Fraser. Say it again. Ready to? One more time. So that's the theme that we will focus on for the, for the coming school term, which will give a time of reflection, impact, serve, and evolve. And I want to just for a brief moment look at the prophet Jeremiah. Oh yes, Jeremiah was a prophet that faced a number of challenges. And if you read Jeremiah 20, you will recognize that even in the midst of those challenges, Jeremiah saw it fit to give God praise. The fact is, when we think of discouragement, discouragement is really a part of life. And discouragement comes most often when we do right things, but we experience poor results. We put out all our effort, but the end result is not what we anticipated. We work hard, but it seems like we're not making progress. The, the footballers, the sports person, they, they turn up for training every day, giving their all. But unfortunately, they lose the game. Think of a parent who spends a lot of time with his child, going out of the way to be the best parent possible. But yet, the child becomes rebellious. You immediately feel discouraged. And you feel like you want to quit. And that was how Jeremiah felt. That was how Jeremiah felt. But one of the important things that came out of all of the experience that Jeremiah had was that he was honest with himself and he was honest with God and he wanted to get out of the situation to rise above the discouragement so what he did he had a conversation with God and he said to him God this is how I feel about the whole thing I'm going to tell you exactly what is going on inside of my heart. Remember, God is God and he knows everything. But yet, even though that is a fact, he encourages us to do what? To speak, to ask, to make our request be known unto him. Can you imagine that there is the possibility that there may be persons here, parents, children, who for years you have internalized some real deep challenges impacting your life to the point where you feel like you have come to the end of your road. And you may even want to ask yourself, is it that God is misleading me? The word of God says, if you wait on him, if you seek him, he will do what? He will renew your strength. And you will mount up. And can you imagine you were discouraged last year? You were discouraged immediately after the pandemic. You felt like you would not have even gotten a chance to go to the PEP exam. But to God be the glory. 
you are here this morning and you are at the best school in Jamaica. I, hear, I, I don't know if my ear is working well, but I hear like somebody in the background saying, no, it's provo they're provoking me. They're not serious. They're not serious. But Jeremiah recognized all that was happening. And in all of this, in his despair, he worshiped. He worshiped. He praised God. Look at verse 13. When you go home of Jeremiah 20, he praised God. In the midst of despair, in the midst of defeat, he recognized that God was able to unlock the door to his victory. Whatever you are going through now, whatever you may even anticipate going through, remember this, that the wise man Solomon, who has been there and done that, he said, listen, the conclusion of the entire matter is to fear God and keep whatever he says dear to your heart. If you trust God in all of these situations, and you do not only trust him when you are going through the difficult time, but you praise him in the difficulties, and he will turn things around in a remarkable way. I have a friend who always say, you, you will never tell what God will do with a life that is committed to him. You can never tell what God, and God is not going to lead you down any path of destruction. And Glenmere is a Christian institution. And even if you see some of the students wiggling up their body and doing all kinds of things, the principle behind it is that it's a Christian institution and we believe in the fear of Almighty God so that he can direct our path. May God bless all of you as you get ready to rise rise above the challenges and rise and be counted god bless you like the prophet jeremiah give thanks and praise always press on beyond your circumstances this morning, the pleasure is mine to greet and honor a superb team of administrators. Our principal of Glenmore High School, Dr. Marsha Smallin, can you give us a wave? <laughs> Chairman of the Board of Management in his absence, Mr. Patrick Ilton. School chaplain, Sister Alvarin Roberts, can you give us a wave, Sister Jem? Our vice principal at the lower school level, Mr. Hales, I think he's somewhere around, or you'll meet him later on. Also want to greet our senior teachers who are in our presence and our grade coordinators. Grade coordinators, if you're here, you can just wave. <laughs> Guidance counselor, Mr. Brian, just did our devotion. Can you wave again, sir? Our Dean of Discipline, Mr. Richards. I also want to acknowledge our specially invited guest, Mr. Texel Christie, distinguished alumnus and also past vice principal. <clears throat> Mrs. Sandra Bailey, president of the local chapter. And to our current students, those who are in our midst, they are right here at the front. You can go ahead and wave your hands. Flagrant greetings and a pleasant morning to each and everyone. Welcome to the Hub of Excellence. Can you put your hands together? Yeah. 
All right, and I know some person's feeling as if I may have left out your name, no. And so at this point, I'm going to be doing a special roll call. So we have some parents who we're going to be acknowledging at this time. And so as I call your category, you can just stand or if you wish to wave your hand. And so we have some of our uh, first time parents. This is your first experience at Glenmere High School. First time parents. Awesome. All right, do we have any returning parents? Returning parents, you have a child or two. All right, do we have any past students and you're no parents? Past students, you're no parents. And I'm gonna save this one because it's very, very special, right? So any of my colleagues, you're here and you're no parents. Colleagues? Amen. And last, by no means least, we have our PEP scholars. So all our PEP scholars, can you just wave your hand? And I have a special song for you. Mr. DJ, ready with our song? All right, so can you stand our PEP scholars? And this song is dedicated to you. Congratulations. Them say, them tell you say, say you can never be the one. But God say, make I tell you say, say now you him choose in one month, in one week. You will sing a new song in two days, a lesser than you will hear. Congratulations, you're a sin. That I can never be all that I see, I've seen that God is greater than that Who can battle with the Lord? And so we want to extend a huge congratulations. And it, at this time, I'm going to invite the audience just to put your hands together as we congratulate our PEP scholars. All right, thank you. And how can I forget, right? So when I entered the building this morning, I saw some faces. And because they were looking so radiant, right? So we have some past teachers, distinguished past teachers of the Glenmere High School family. I want you to stand as we acknowledge your presence today. Past teachers. And you may know some of them so they can turn as they wave. Amen. Retirement is a good thing, right? They're looking so lovely. All right, so today our team presents our first event for the new school year, and that's our welcome and torch lighting ceremony. It's themed, ready to rise. And as I call the letters, you're going to tell me what they mean. They're on your program or they're on the backdrop here. So grab your program as we're going to go through our theme, ready to rise. R. I. S sure. and E, e and so right throughout our school year you will be hearing about this team 
My name is Faith Grant, and I'm a proud past student and a current teacher here at this outstanding institution in the Department of Business. Today, I am elated to be your moderator. And also, throughout this program, you'll be hearing testimonials. You'll be participating in our rap session. You will experience our performances from our choir and different um, clubs and societies. Also, you will witness the symbolic lighting and torch uh, passing of the flagrant torch. So, sit back and enjoy. Glenmere High School is a brand you know and trust. Is that true? Yes, man. It's a brand. We have been established for over 63 years. This year in September, we will celebrate our 64th year. And if you know about brands, you have to experience it, right? So at Glenmere, you have to walk through the doors and experience the brand. You can't let any ear say. You have to come and experience it. So like a Jamaican, you can't tell somebody about the rundown if you have never had it. Is that so? So you have to can taste the rundown and tell somebody else about that. And so is Glenmere High School. You have to experience it to know about that experience. And today, our, our brand, our tradition is built on excellence. And we're so happy to have you here as you will continue on this brand of excellence. Excellence is a must and we can do it. Glenmere High School remains the number one school of choice. When I say Glenmuir, you say number one. Glenmuir? No, you don't. I, 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 don't, I don't hear it at all. Glenmuir? Number one. Number one? Yeah. All right. At this time, Mrs. Sandra Borland Bailey, Glenmuir High School alumni and president of the local chapter, will come now to share her greetings. So thank you so very much, uh, event moderator, Ms. Faith Grant, Dr. Marsha Smalling, principal, staff, past teachers, students, PEP scholars, members of the alumni body, parents, friends. Good morning, everyone. I bring greetings on behalf of the Past Students Association, local and overseas chapters. I remember with such fondness the first day I entered this school as a student many, 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 many years ago. I was eager, I was eager to wear the maroon and white plus the straw hat which complemented the uniform then. Many of you don't know that Glenmuir students, girls used to wear straw hats. I was filled with so much pride, eager to learn and to make new friends. I could not wait to participate in the extracurricular activities and to further develop the discipline required to succeed. I am sure those dreams are also your dreams, plus more. Pep scholars, today is the beginning of your Glenmuir journey. How many of you have a plan for the next five years? Show me your hands. How many have a little plan for the next five years of your Glenmere? I see one, I see two, I, oh, I see many hands. I see many hands. So good, well done. For those of you who do not yet have a plan, start thinking about it. Success does not happen by accident. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Do you realize that you will be the class of 2027? That's five years from now. Looks very long, right? Dr. Smalling, unless a new auditorium is built by then, many of the students here, all the students here, will be accepting your graduation diploma in 2022 in this room. Believe me, time passes by quickly. Make every term count. Make every year count. There are far more curricular activities at Glenmuir today than when I was a student. Be involved. Embrace the leadership opportunities that will present itself. There are many, many students who sat pep with you who would have loved to be sitting in this auditorium with you today. Please do not take this opportunity for granted. 
you are at the best school in Jamaica. You have the best teachers at your disposal. Many of them are past students of this noble institution. Parents, I encourage you to support your children on their high school journey. You are now part of the Glenmuir family. Stay close to the school, stay close to the teachers, and support the activities and events at the school. We are stronger when we work together. Pep Scholars, I welcome you to Glenmuir, and I hope you are ready to rise. I know that you will do well and make us all very proud. Flagrant's Veritati Studio, burning with a zeal for truth. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bailey, for that greeting. And at this time, we'll be hearing from our renowned Glenmere High School Choir. They will now take the stage to do their performance. witness for my Lord, who will be a witness for my Lord, who will be a witness for my Lord, who will be a witness for my Lord.
All right, thank you to our choir and also choir director. Can you put your hands together for them? Beautiful and lovely singing. Principal Extraordinary, Glenmere High School alumni, author, motivator, and a champion in her own right. So am I speaking of? Our very own Dr. Marsha Smalling will be coming at this time to connect with you, our audience. Put your hands together for her. I got so comfortable enjoying everything, I didn't realize it was actually my time to come and connect with you. Good morning, everyone. How no do? Happy to be here? Happy to be at the Hub of Excellence? Okay, great. We're happy to have you. I'm happy to welcome you. Um, this is one of our highly anticipated activities for the calendar year. And um, I'm happy personally that I was able to come out and to be with you. I want to especially um, greet um, this morning some very special people. Mark you, you're all very, very special. Um, but I want to recognize Mr. Textile Christie, um, our chief torchbearer um, today, um, one of our distinguished um, past students past member of staff here actually acted as a vice principal and he's now serving as the principal of Kellitz High School. Mr. Christie, thank you so much for being with us um, today. We are truly honored. We have um, some of our retired um, teachers who will be participating today. Um, Mrs. Beverly McKenzie, um, Mrs. James, Mrs. Channer McKenzie, Mrs. Togman, happy to have them. Um, Mrs. Sandra Bailey, um, president of the local chapter of our past students association, our school's chaplain, um, our vice principals, our staff members, past students who are now parents. Um, good morning and again, thank you so much for being here with us. And of course, there are persons who are connected with us online. Thank you so much for watching and for always um, showing your support for Glenmuir High School. I want to congratulate our PEP scholars. I want for you to stand again. I know that um, Ms. Grant um, congratulated you, but you know I have to add my little bit to it. Bright faces. I know you worked hard in your respective schools, and this is the reward. You were actually placed, or you earned a place at the Hub of Excellence, the number one high school in Jamaica, and we want for you to bask in your glory. You worked hard, you deserve it, we congratulate you, and we're here to say to you, it's big fish to little fish why have i said this you were top boy and top girls in your respective schools you're now at glenmere high school and guess what you now have to be competing to maintain that standard of being top boy and top girl not here to frighten you but to share with you the reality that it's a different kettle of fish when you get to high school you were probably battling your way through four subjects. Now you have 14 to contend with when you get to grade seven. That's a mammoth of a task. And we have some of our outstanding students who are here who are going to be sharing their journey with you, the real journey, so that you can understand what you're up to. But guess what? You are stars and you are ready to rise. Rise above the challenges, any challenge that um, will confront you. There's going to be a chance for you to create possibilities out of it. And we know that you're more than capable. You may be seated. P 
parents, I know this is a proud moment for many of you, and understandably so. I know that it was probably your dream. I want my child to go to Glenmere High School, and they have made you proud. Many of you invested quite a bit, sending your children to school. Two years of the pandemic just intensified the challenges, but here you are, and it speaks volume to the goodness of God, right? I want to say that the experiences that we invest so much to get our students or children to the high school of their choice. And then once they get there, too many of you just drop the ball and figure that, okay, them reach. It's a wrong way of thinking because now is when they are going to need the support. Especially when the hormones start kicking. I know many of you are going to call us and say, listen, we can't manage. We need help. We're kindly asking you. It is effort in, excellence out. We can't hide away from that at all. Don't think that Glenn Muir will be working the miracles. It ain't going to happen. It requires hard work. I'm going to be inviting some students to come and stand with me. Tonique and our distinguished honor roll students. I want for them to come quickly. Stephanie is here. She didn't come. All right. Dominique, come. So in 2019, when we first initiated this idea of having the welcome and torchlight in ceremony, Dominique was the first GSAT matriculant at the time. And I invited Dominique because we want to ensure that the students consistently perform above average. We don't want for you to enter Glenmuir with your 80 and 90 percent average and then you just keep going downhill. Don Dominique has maintained high performance. And Dominique, I just want for you to very quickly, two minutes, just share with especially the students, and I know the parents are listening on your journey and some of your winning strategies. And I'm sure you're gonna talk about those periods when you felt like I am not doing as well as I know I'm capable of doing. So I'm going to allow you the privilege at this time. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my journey, it's been a difficult one. When I just came to Glenmere, like you all, I didn't know it was going to be this difficult. Um, my church sister would say is a different kettle of fish. Glenmere is going to be very different than primary school or prep school. You're going from four to 14 subjects, and you're not going to necessarily like some of them. And I know that I didn't like a lot of them. But what you have to do is you have to work hard you have to do your best. And my chemistry teacher once told us that, well, you can apply this to everything. Chemistry is 50% knowledge, 40% confidence, and 10% luck. So even though you need to know a lot, you need to also believe in yourself. And that's something I have realized and I've started to do. Because if you have all the knowledge in the world and don't believe in yourself, it doesn't really make any sense. Because you're not going to be able to execute. So. That's one thing that I'm asking you all to do, just to believe in yourselves. Yeah. And then these two little ones, she's a drama queen. <laughs> if you listen to Tonique, well, I'll allow her to speak. But these Blazers um, students are Blazers that 
um, students who earn averages of 90% and more um, will have the honor of wearing what we call the academic um, blazers. And um, they have consistently, consistently earned 90% and above. And they will tell you how they have managed to do that. Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Tanique, as you may have already heard. And firstly, I would like to thank Ms. Smalling for having me here and actually like asking me, like actually thinking of me to share some tips. So as Dominic said, Glenmere was a bit difficult. Big, big shift from what I was used to, you know, the usual four to six subjects in prep school and the 14. And obviously, well, you're not going to be good at everything. And I was not good at a lot of subjects. So what I did to help with that was to maintain the effort. I know that my favorite subjects would include English and science. And as a result, I would subconsciously put more effort into the English and the science. What I needed to do now was to look within myself and to actually apply the effort that I put into English and science and all the subjects that I'm passionate about and put it into the subjects that I'm not good at. Say, for example, industrial techniques, visual arts, <laughs> and um, geography. Hi, Mr. Ratchi. <laughs> But yeah, and I also realized that I needed to pay attention in class, you know. Contrary to what I used to do in prep school, I used to sleep in class and I still pass. I, I actually needed to, to pay attention. So yeah, I needed to combat the lethargy, put myself into a schedule and a routine, plan, organize so that I could execute and, you know, reap the benefits of my efforts. And I hope you all like learned some tips from me and I hope you all applied some of this and I wish you guys all the best on your, on your journey at Glenmere. And I hope it's an extremely fulfilling one and I hope it helps you to learn more about yourself, find your passions and interests. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kayla Harrising. And to begin this, I agree with what everybody said, and I hope you got what they were saying. But I also want you guys to know that you can't settle. You're probably coming in, you say, yes, I have my A's, I'm good. And you might still be getting your A's when you're in first form, second form, third form, and up. But you need to know that you need to do your best. You might say, I'm doing enough, but is it your best? You need to put in that effort, like everyone was saying. Um, for me personally, I came in, I was already th saying, I've made it, yes, I did my best, and I was coming in, I was saying, I'm used to second place. So I was like, I'm going to maintain that, or I'm just going to keep that. And you cannot settle for that. I know that you're probably saying, yes, but second place, next to one, right? The good man. But even then, you need to put in your all. And even if you're in second place, make it be by a point. If you're a competitor and your friend, don't think that this is just a race, guys. You're here to have fun as well. This is all in good name, but you also want to be doing your best, like I said. If your friend getting one point over you, make the effort to keep it or to go above. But remember, like I said, it's all fun. I remember at the end of the day, you can't come in here being like, you know, I'm going to study the day before. It won't work. I've seen it over and over again. I've done it myself. And you end up thinking you did so well. When you get the grades back, you're like, oh. Because like they're saying, you're jumping from 46 subjects all the way to 14. And that's a drastic change. It really is. So I'm going to implore you guys to study, keep up the studying. You have assessments, monthly assessments. So you will be getting what I would like to call it practice. But remember that effort is still needed. All right, so Stephanie is here. Um, she's a special one, and, and um, I love them, you know, but this one is kind of more special because Stephanie in the Easter Terminal, she got the honor roll, and then she pushed because she decided that, listen, I want one of those blazers. And she, for this summer, 
has earned the academic um, blazer. So she will share with you how she managed to, to get that done, Stephanie. So good morning, everyone. I'm Stephanie Enriquez. And my first tip to get in where I am now is that discipline yourself. Don't study the day before exam because that will work for everyone. Probably you, it will work for some, but it will not work for some. And like one month before the exam, you can like discipline yourself, have like a study timetable. So you say for each day you study this specific subject, and then for the next, you study a next particular subject for like one hour. But remember, don't study like when you're, you're near to fall asleep and when, you're, when your belly is full. Don't do that. My advice, study like you come from school, yeah, you take a one hour nap, and then you like rest off for like 15 minutes, and then you go and you go and study. And at the end, make sure you have like a little summary of what you have studied so you like retain everything. And do some little practice work. You can go on YouTube or you can go on Google and get find those practice quiz to like to see if you have retained everything that you have studied. And don't be afraid to ask for help if you need help because asking help for help can get you a long way. And always make sure that you have like, this one thing that motivates you. Say for, say, for example, you want this new iPhone and you're working towards it, it will, it will motivate you to get that grade up, right? And just do your best. Discipline yourself as best as you can. And when you're studying, um, for me personally, background music don't work for me and study groups. But if it works best for you, find your method to study. And you have those little sticky notes that for me, I like mathematics and industrial techniques, and I do well in those subjects. So for Spanish, where I, don't, I know I don't do so well, I have like these sticky notes where I write like the vocabulary. And like I would, every morning, I would read the vocabularies in like my school bus. So I retain like the vocabulary and look over some like some sentence structure and et cetera to make sure that Yes, even though I don't like the subject, I'm still putting in the effort so I can get a good grade at the end of the day. Thank you. So congratulations again, guys, and continue to do well. And um, remember, you can be um, unselfishly competitive. They're all from, these three, all from the same class, so they were able to pull one up with them, and that's a good thing. You can have your seat. So I made sure to highlight the academic side of things because while we're a well-rounded school, we do well in football and cricket and basketball and netball. Um, this year, we were all island champions in the under 15 netball competitions. Yes, you can clap. And as I said last year, the D-Cup um, defeated Clarendon College 1-0, and I still feel like we won D-Cup um, overall and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so we do well, but I want for you to understand that your academic work comes first. It is priority number one, and we're going to be pushing, 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 because we do not want to leave anybody behind at all. I want to touch on, on, on something just before I, I close off, and I know that there are many parents who are saying, um, yeah. So we want to talk about the finances of the school. Yes, and you're not going to get away from it. It takes cash to care. And I know that you have been hearing that you do not have to pay your fees, um, and it's okay. I mean... If it is that the government would give us adequate funds, it would be a sweet thing for you not to have to think about taking any funds from your pocket. I mean, if I were a parent, I would love that. But it's not the case. Uh, Mr. Christie is also a principal in there, and there are possibly, possibly other um, principals in the audience as well. And you know that we need those voluntary contributions from you parents. And for those who know me, I say to every single one of you, even if the child is on path, pay a little something. Pay something. It, it gives a sense of pride when you 
when you work hard and you say, okay, I'm investing in my child. When we think about all the things that we have to do as a school, it takes cash to care. It does. We have to pay our choir director, and you listen to our choir. Choir members stand up because sometimes, because you're not entering competitions, you don't get the big up that you truly, truly deserve. And while everyone else is on summer break, I realize you're still having rehearsals. And that's a big thing. It is a big thing, and we really appreciate the work that you do. We really do appreciate the work that you do. You may be seated. So parents, you heard it from me. We're looking out for it. And I'm going to be personally calling you and begging you. It doesn't matter how much. Just pay what you can afford to pay. We need the support. And I know the world is listening to me. The reason I am doing this. Right? So just in case you were wondering... We're asking you. We're not compelling you. And I mean, over the years, even before the government said, listen, you don't have to pay, we have always accommodated students who truly cannot afford it. We have never turned away a child, and we will never, ever do that. But we need a little money still. So we're asking you to support us in that kind of a way. So students, parents, Welcome again to Glenmere High School. It is a safe space for your children to blossom. Again, miracles will not happen. It requires hard work. As a team here, we're capable, we're committed, we have the courage, but we want for you to meet us halfway. Many of you chose Glenmere because you say that, listen, it's an excellent school. They believe in discipline. But parents, you have to help us to uphold that high standard of discipline. You see, the lateness, the fact that when the children wrong, they take the cell phones when they are not supposed to, you defend them. When we ask them to groom the hair and to deport themselves well, and you ask where hair have to do with learning and where clothes have to do with learning, Glenmuir is not going to tolerate that. There is a standard that has worked for us over the years. We have past teachers here who can say they are the foundation people. And if it is working, why do we want to change it? We see the indiscipline in our society. That is leading into murders, the violence, the trauma. And we're saying that as a school, we're not going to drop our hands. And you still have time. If you do not believe in our standards, if you believe that we're too strict, if you believe that the rules them not make no sense, guess what? You still have time. I'm sure there are other schools who would be happy to take your kids because they have good grades. And then there are other students who wouldn't mind a space right here. Those who truly believe in the maroon and white who'd want the space. So we do not want for you to tear down the school. We want for you to rise with us. Just rise with us and let us celebrate together every step of the way. And in 2027, when your students, and we want every single one of them to make sure that they meet the requirements to graduate and to transition to the next level. Things are evolving, and we don't know what's going to happen. What we know is that we want for our students to maximize their potential. May God continue to bless you along this journey. And remember that when we commit our plans to the Lord, he will always make them successful. May we always proclaim Flagrans Veritatis Studio, burning with a zeal for truth. Thank you.
Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Smalling. And by now, I'm pretty sure we're getting a little bit more settled. And our students, I hope you weren't too scared, you know, hearing those testimonials. And so at this time, we're going to do a little rap session. All right, so new school brings excitement, it brings anxiety. And I'm pretty sure a little bit of fear because of the uncertainty. And so just before I go into the rap session, as we mentioned, time. We're very disciplined and we have a high standard. And so this morning, the first parent and child to arrive, you will be getting a prize. And so if you know yourself, I wonder who is the first parent to arrive? Who was the first parent to arrive? Do you know yourself? Mrs. Beverly Henry McFarlane, where are you? All right, and with her is son Raheem McFarlane, and Raheem is from the Azard Primary. And so we do have a prize for you. Come, Raheem, you'll be receiving a tablet. And this is courtesy of the UK chapter. Get the tablet. Yes, man, give them a lovely hand. All right, and so, Raheem, I'm pretty sure you will be making use of this tablet, right? Because during this, you know, school time, we're still doing the online and the face-to-face. -face. And so I really want to tell you thanks, Mommy, for, you know, making that first step of being on time. And so we do look for, for uh, Raheem to continue to be on time for school. And so we'll be making that presentation. Um, one of our cadets here. And Ed Boy, Shamir Martin. <laughs> and Mommy, you'll receive a nice laptop bag. <laughs> All right, thank you. So can I have a microphone on the ground, please? on the floor. So I have three questions here to ask, and this is for students. You'll be sharing with us very briefly. So our first question. What excites you the most about this school? Who's going to answer? What excites you the most about this school? All right, I see a hand over here. My name is Taylor Lee Thompson. My name is Taylor Lee Thompson, and I'm from Monsignor College and Barron Preparatory School in Old Arbor. And what excites me most from this school is the people. All right, the people. So I'm, I'm figuring the teachers or the friends they're about to make. All right, so you're very much excited to start your first day at Glenmere High School. Awesome. My second question, by the way, you do receive a little token. I need a little help. Joel, can you pass me one of the notebooks? Yeah. All right, so my second question. What are some fears you have? So it's a new school, it's a new environment. You're gonna meet some new teachers new principal, what are some fears that you have? Who's going to answer? I see hands down here. Good, good morning, my name is Al J. Savzan from the Treadlight Primary and a fear I have is that I will not maintain my academic standards. And that's, that's a big fear, you know, that's a big fear. However, uh, son, you'd have heard the testimonial from your, you know, your older brothers and sisters right here, because we're family, right? And once you, you push, right, once you maintain that discipline, and the teachers are here, the principal is here to help you, you will maintain your academic uh, performance. Thank you so much. Anybody else want to answer? Hello, my name is... <laughs> Oh, my name 
my name is Jelia Paisley, and the thing that I'm a hello, hello. My name is Jelia Paisley, and the thing that um, frightens me the most about this school is the discipline. I'm afraid that I might break one of the rules, and I'll get in trouble. Yeah, that's the thing that frightens me the most. Oh boy. So you're afraid of getting into trouble? Yes, very much. I hope you won't get into trouble, right? Because yes, we do have consequences for your actions, right? So yes. I know you're going to be a good girl. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, we have another answer. My name is Jeffany Mills, and the thing that fears me the most is not maintaining my standard. All right, so we have a lot of fears here about the standard. I'll just share with you a quick uh, testimonial. I, as I did say, I'm a past student, right? So when I, when I entered Glenmuir, um, a different person, if you told me 10 years down the line that Faith, you'll be standing here presenting, I'll tell you no, right? Because I was very shy, very reserved, I'm actually an intro extroverted person. And so one thing I knew as I set out was that I had to do well. Why? Mommy was depending on me, right? So mommy was a single parent and I had to do well. Um, and so no matter the challenges, I, I really love mathematics then. I still do. But the English language I had to read, the geography I had to do. And so I ensure that in whatever I do, I maintain that standard, right? So again, no need to be fearful because we're here. Once you put that effort in, you will get those results out. Put your hands together for our children. All right, and I have one last question. Let's hear this one. So it says, what expectations do you have of this school? What are your expectations of this school? My name is Ronaldo Turner. I expect that I would, be, I would do good on my test and pass for a college of my choice. All right, any more expectation of the school? All right, I'll take one more. My expectations of the school is that it will help to push and motivate me. Very good, all right. So the school will help to push, and we'll just take one from upstairs very quickly. Good morning, Glen. Good morning, Glenmere. My expectations for this school: the swelling, swelling bee club, the robotics club. All right, awesome. So you are ready to contribute to our extracurricular activities. All right, thank you. And you see, parents or children have a lot to, to ask. And so when you go home today, you're going to have that nice conversation with them about their expectations, about their fears. And so as we welcome them into this new school uh, environment. Ready to rise. R. I. S. And E. Ready to rise. Now, who thought Glenmere High School is all work and no play? That's not true, because our students have excelled in our different performances, and so they're exposed to different extracurricular activities, 
And I am sure you have heard of some of these, right? Or quiz club, or football team, netball, and a long list. And so, as soon as you enter September morning, children, we want you to sign up and be a part of these, right? You're going to explore your interest, and you're going to share your talents. And so, coming now to perform is one of our excellent students, and he is J Javian Grant. He'll be doing a dub poetry, and Javian is also vice president of the Students' Council. Welcome him. Good morning, everyone. All right, so my name is Javian Grant, and today I'll be presenting a poem pertaining to the theme, Rise, Reflect, Impact, Serve, and Evolve. All right, so now I'll be doing an icebreaker. So when I say flagrants, you will say blaze, flagrants, flagrants. When I say flagrants, you say blaze, flagrants, flagrants. Okay. Mr. Firais, ready up now. Mr. Firais, ready up now. Glenmere students, you don't know, say so we think loud. When I say flagrants, you say blaze, flagrants, flagrants. When I say flagrants, you will say blaze, flagrants, flagrants. Mr. Fries, ready up now. Glenmere students, you don't know, say, feel waiting loud. Put a pep in your step, head up, car, we proud. Big up every pep student in the crowd. Mr. Fries, ready up now. Glenmere students, you don't know, say, feel waiting loud. Put a pep in your step, head up, car, we proud. Big up every pep student in the crowd. 1958, catch a date, 55 students. Through the gate, reflecting on the old time Glenmere day, September 15, 1958. On your mark, get set, let's go. Well, bright like a bulb, we are glow from back in the days. Yeah, we up till now. Everybody will love Glenmere, Mr. Ferris. Ready up now. Glenmere students, you don't know, say, feel waiting loud. Put a pep in your step, head up, car, we proud. Big up every pep student in the crowd, Mr. Ferris. Ready up now. Glenmere students, you don't know, say, feel waiting loud. Put a pep in your step, head up, car, we proud. Big up every pep student in the crowd. Up to the sky, to the moon. Never turn back. Anywhere we go, we have to left an impact. Excellence, yes, that is the case. From you say flagrants are blaze, we are blaze. When I say flagrants, you say blaze. Flagrants, flagrants. When I say flagrants, you say blaze. Flagrants, flagrants. When I say flagrants, you say blaze. Flagrants, flagrants. When I at his studio, burning with the zeal for truth, serving people and I build up the youths. Pause, remember the golden rule. Do unto others as you like them to do unto you. Mr. Ferris, ready up now. Glenmere students, you don't know, Sefi waiting loud. Put a pep in your step, head up, car, we proud. Big up every pep student in the crowd, Mr. Ferris, car, we proud. Big up every pep student in the crowd. Let go the bird, fly, we are fly. Swear like an eagle, rise to greater heights. Ready if you evolve, take a flight, what a sight. Put in the work, you better toil through the night. Me say, you rise, ready up now. Glenmere students, you don't know, say, say flagrants, you will say blaze. Flagrants, 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 you will say blaze. Flagrants, flagrants. When I say flagrants, you will say blaze. Flagrants.
flag right. All right. So when you hear Glenmere High School, we blaze. We blaze with excellence. Thank you, JVN, for that performance. Now, their first year experience at the fourth form level. And so I'm going to ask uh, Kyle Bennett from the form 1R and Davian Whiteley from 1L to come and share. Davian. principals, members of staff, our school chaplain, Sister Avarine Roberts, guests, parents, fellow students, a wonderful and blessed morning to you. My name is Kyle Bennett, and I have just completed my first leg, the first leg of my journey here at Glenmere High. Joining the Glenmere High School family was a big deal for me. I was already aware of the high standards of the school. And that was exactly what I wanted to help me to maintain and maybe even exceed the standards I had set for myself and those close to me expect of me. I was rather disappointed when I realized that I would have to start my journey online. I had already been online for over a year and was certainly not looking forward to starting my new school in this way. As expected, there were many challenges such as having to interact and work with a group of students and teachers I had never met. A few times when I passed children on the street that seemed to be in my age group, I would wonder, could that be one of my classmates? There were other issues such as power outages and poor internet service, which often affected our class flow. There was also a period of time when it seemed as if all our teachers had suddenly discovered PowerPoints, and we found ourselves quite overwhelmed with different presentations and projects to complete all at once. Thankfully, those same teachers made great effort to ensure that our online experience was interactive, educational, and fun. Mr. Randall, our math teacher, got us pep before every class with a riddle, and Ms. Holmes reminded us every chance she got that we are bright, intelligent, and polished. From the get-go, our principal, Dr. Smalling, told us we were expected to pop, that is, to produce optimal performance, and I was determined that I would do just that. The first half of the year, I had to learn to balance 14 subjects, as well as quiz training, while leaving my family for the first time to live in a dorm. I had to manage my time well to ensure that my classwork and assignments were completed on time. Tri-weeklies and exam preparations were on point, and I was on top of all the material I had to learn for quiz. My chores were done and I had some downtime. How did I manage this? Well, I worked hard, I prayed, I listened to advice, and I never forgot my goals. I was a bit disappointed with my performance in the Easter terminal exams. Even though I made the principal's honor roll, the culture that was instilled in me from an early age and that prevails at Glenmere is to always strive for the highest. So I reflected, on where I, on, reflected I, on where I went wrong and made up my mind to find a better balance that would ensure my grades improved. Coming face to face in January was a relief and I thought, thank God, no more online PE. There were new challenges, but it was good to finally meet up with longtime friends and to officially meet my teachers, batchmates and other members of the school community. It was a bit of a surprise to see how different most of them looked in person. I definitely preferred the second half of the year as we had full face-to-face -face instruction and we were able to accomplish more. The interactions with our teachers were more effective and I was now able to participate in more activities. I was also able to improve my performance and make the distinguished honor roll for the summer terminal exams. My my time here at Glenmere High so far has been quite re rewarding. As I learned a lot, I got the chance to represent my school, and I've also had some fun, especially with the interform quiz and football competitions. My advice to you all this morning is to start right. Always put your trust in God, believe in yourselves, choose friends that will help you to, to become better persons, be accountable and take responsibility for your own actions. Make sure to participate actively in your classes 
as that will help you to grasp whatever topic is being taught. And never be afraid to ask questions. Get involved in the life of the school and make sure to have fun. Please make the most of your time here at this wonderful institution. And regardless of what is going on around you, be ready to rise to the occasion. Reflect regularly in your journey. Impact those around you in a positive way. Serve with humility in the various clubs and societies and the wider community. And evolve into the best version of yourselves. In the words of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. Flagrance Veritatis Studio, burning with the zeal for truth. All protocols observed, good morning. I am Devani Wisely, formerly of the Form 1L and moving on to the Form 2L. At this point in time, I would like to share with you all my first form experiences at this hub of excellence. Last August, I sat where you are seated today and got my, and got my first experience of what first form would be like. And I can tell you, I had a lot of expectations most of which were met and others which were not. After being online for the latter half of grade five and most of grade six, excluding the months in which we sat our PEP examinations, I was excited to start high school on face to face. However, after we found out that face to face school had been canceled and we would have to start high school online, I was disappointed. But I soon got over it as September 6, 2021, the day I would officially begin my first form journey approached, and I realized that I would no longer have to wake up early to arrive at school on time. Since when online, I could easily log into my classes when the time came. On the day, after meeting my amazing teachers and seeing the wonderful friends I could make, I felt reassured that this would be an amazing school year. Our teachers gave us the greetings we needed to feel welcomed and comfortable in this new institution. The teachers made sure that our transition from prep slash primary school was smooth and that we were ready to begin our high school lessons. On September 15, 2021, we celebrated the 63rd Founders Day celebration under the theme, Level Up, Carry the Flag and Frame, Traditionally, Physically, Virtually. This was done on Zoom and it was an eventful day as there were rap sessions with past students, best of decades, variety concert, and popular song and speech competitions. After a few weeks, there they were our tri-weekly tests, which were given to us to summarize and test our knowledge of what we had learned in the past weeks and to contribute 20% to our final grade. Being tested so early in the term was new to me, as, on, as in primary school, I was only tested at the, each of, at the end of each term. The one regret I have is that I procrastinated and waited until a day before the test to study. My advice to you, is to do your best not to procrastinate, but to use your time as wisely as you can. And as Mistress K. White Hamilton always reminds us, create a study timetable, which will enable you to manage your time better and more efficiently. The Christmas term ended with the Philly Island Christmas concert. Sending us off for our two week Christmas break and we look forward to being able to come to school face to face on January 10, 2022. To meet our friends which we made online and to stroll the compounds. Even though we were at school in an on and off fashion, it was still good to be able to interact with teachers, fellow schoolmates and overall other humans who were not just a part of my family. Personally, 
This made my studies better and gave me some opportunities to ask questions which I never had online. I was able to get help from friends if there was a topic I did not understand, and I was able to help others with topics I understood if they did not understand. Always remember, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you, as said in Matthew 7, verse 12. As the time came towards Easter terminal examinations, studying and preparedness was key to feeling confident that you would pass your exams, not just by the passing grade, but with flying colors. After putting in effort, the best reward will be looking at your grades to see that you did your best and not having to think about the fact that you could have done something that you did not. After finishing a week of exams, we were off on Easter breaks. Some exams were harder than expected, and even though I did study, there were, there were, they were still a bit difficult. When I realized that I missed the distinguished honor roll by a striking 0.23 points, I had to set in my mind that for summer terminal, I would have to be more focused and increase the time I spent studying and to use the strategies I had, which were to make a study timetable, create a study group with classmates so we could help each other with any topics we didn't understand, read over the notes I got at the end of each day, use online use online practice materials to better understand lessons taught during the day, also to look up the lessons that were taught on YouTube if I did not understand, and to actively participate in class and ask my teachers questions. These strategies ensured that I got an excellent grade. Summer term was an exciting one as it was an eventful, as it was eventful, and we had days such as Children Day which started off with an amazing devotional exercise. We were treated by our teachers and we had a concert where teachers danced and students showed their talents. And there was a performance by Chi Ching Ching. Uniform day when teachers were dressed in high school uniforms and students had the opportunity to dress as teachers and teach the teacher's class. Walkie talkie day when we could see teachers dressed in their walkie talkie dress. Summer term triweeklies and summer terminal examinations were around the corner and every student was aiming to be prepared and to get a higher grade than what they got on the Easter terminal examinations. And to pop, produce optimal performance. Personally, to best prepare myself for the exams, my friends and I created a study group so we could help each other with topics we did not understand and to make sure that each and every one of us was ready for our examinations. We went into the exams feeling confident, knowing we, pre we prepared the best we could for our examinations and that we would be proud of our grades when they came out. John Dewey once said, we do not learn from experience, we learn from reflecting on experience. Reflect to grow, overcome and to succeed. Welcome to Glenmere High School, the hub of excellence. Flagrance Veritatis Studios, burning with the zeal for truth. All right, so you have sat and listened to a nice rundown of the first year experience. All right, I'm pretty sure students are, you're even more excited now to be a part of our school. Thank you so much, Kyle and Davian for sharing. You know, I, I want to do a quick roll call, right? Because I see so many uniforms, some of these schools I know, some I don't know. So again, if we could have a mic on the ground. Uh, the different schools, just a representative, could you stand? Uh, should we call them up? Call them? Call them? All right, so just a representative. So if somebody else from your school is standing, just one person from the school, all right? All right, so we're going to hear some of our feeder schools at this time. Go ahead.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Fabian Donald, and I am from Maypen Primary School. Here's what, here's what, Fabian. I am also from Maypen Primary School, so welcome to Glenmere High School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kian Peters, and I am from Beulah All Age School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jada Thompson. I'm from Davis Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. I am Newton Thomas, and I am from Cross Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. I am Jelani Archer, and I am from Brixton Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Romaine Johnson, and I am from Canton Spring Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. I am Tamar Yates, and I'm from Mineralites Primary School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Angie Speaker, and I'm from Good Hope Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. I am Aljay Subzan, and I am from Treadlight Primary School. Good morning, everyone. I am Jevane Mills from Foundation Preparatory School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alika Wilson, and I am from Freetown Primary School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alexander Burrows, and I am from Exceed Group of Schools. Good morning, everyone. I, I am from Boys Content Primary and Infant School. Hello, everyone. My name is Zawadi Simpson, and I am from the Hayes Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Thalicia Booth, and I'm from the Mineral Heights Christian Preparatory School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dania Lewis, and I am from Denby Primary School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jalen Bryan, and I'm from Watsonton Primary School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kenny Bell, and I am from the Mokal Primary School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michaela Robinson, and I am from Glenmere Preparatory School. Good morning, everyone. I am Ray McFarlane, and I am from the Azad Primary School and Special Education Unit. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kay O'Neill Morgan, and I'm from Mount St. Joseph Preparatory. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jamal Henry, and I'm from Molly Mount Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. I am D'Angelo Manning, and I'm from Richmond Park Primary School. Good morning, everyone. I am Donny Fraser, and I am from Grange Hill Primary. Primary. Good morning, good morning, everyone. I'm I'm Devon Anderson. I am from Palm Summit Preparatory School. Good morning, everyone. I'm. Chris good morning, everyone. I'm Christian Hausen, and I'm from West Lindsay's College Prep School. Hello everyone, I'm Molly Miller from the Montenia Colin Bryan Preparatory School. Good morning everyone, I'm Esther Taylor from Yorktown Primary and Infant School. Good morning everyone, I am Taji Yunis from Four Pass Primary and Junior High School. 
Greetings everyone, my name is Grace Ann Levine and I am from the Effortville Primary School. Good morning everyone, my name is Alia Williams and I am from the Racecourse Primary School. Good morning everyone, I am Amoy Ellis and I am from Frankfield Primary and Infant School. Good morning everyone, my name is Cleona Chapman, I am from Old Arbor Primary School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aquilina Pitte, and I am from the Critter Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. I am Akira Gale from John Austin Primary School. Good morning, everyone. I am from Chapeltown Primary School. Dinner Richards. School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jamilia Morrison, and I'm from Harrison's Preparatory. Good morning, everyone. I am Jaheem Reed, and I am from Osborne Store Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tavran Duncan, and I am from D. Wasserton Primary School. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am Tyrus Marbeer, and I am from Milk River Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ileana Shepard, and I am from Kensington Primary in Portmore. Good morning, everyone. I am Rihanna Ali, and I am from Ginmid Primary School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jay Deke Allen, and I attend the Red Hills Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Devaney Martin, and I am from the Tollgate Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Khaled Mullins, and I, and, and, uh, and I am from Midland Preparatory School. Good morning, everyone. I am Jazeera Brown, and I am from the Woodhall Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. I'm from the. I'm, my name is Malik Edwards, and I'm from the Old Harbor Bay Primary School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Venisha Gill, and I'm from Rest Primary Infant School. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shamiki Miller, and I am from the Rock River Primary School. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dejane Brissett, and I am from the Mount Providence Primary and Infant School. Good morning, everyone. I'm Samantha Bravo, and I'm from the Rock Primary and Infant School. All right, thank you. So you would have heard we have so many feeder schools, right? We're talking about Upper Clarendon, Central, South. We're talking about even St. Catherine and some of the places I don't know. Huh? West, all the way from Westmoreland. Huh? God is indeed good. And I'm pretty sure you do take pride in your uniform. But guess what? In a matter of weeks, they're going to put away those uniform and you'll be clothed in your maroon and white and for the boys your maroon tie and so at this time i'm going to ask our eds and deputies they'll be coming to share the pride of the uniform
Good morning, parents. Good morning, new students. <laughs> Dr. Smallin, all protocols observed. My name is Shamir Martin, and I am the head boy for the academic year of 2021 to 2022. My name is Markela Edwards, and I'm the head girl for the academic year 2021-2022. Good morning, everyone. I am Denisha Gajardon, and I am one of your deputy head girls for the academic year 2021 to 2022. Good morning, everyone. My name is Donald Dunkley, and I am your deputy head boy for the year 2021 2022. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mikhail Weir, and I am the deputy head boy for the year 2021 2022. We must express apologies for one of our deputy head girls, Samantha Ellis. She was unable to make it today. We believe that wearing the Glenmuir High School uniform has two aspects, with that being the physical aspect and the moral aspect. At this time, I will invite Shamir and Denisha to speak to you about the physical aspect of wearing our uniform. All right. So if you look behind me here, we have some model students that represent what is expected of the new students when they arrive in September. Now, I'm going to be focusing on the males. So, the males should have the brown khaki shirt with short sleeves. Sleeves must not be extended. And I repeat, must not be extended below the elbow and must not be rolled or cuffed. The shirt is made to be worn with a plain maroon color tie with brown khaki pants. The undershirt worn should not be visible. Marinas or V-cut undershirts are highly recommended. Now, if you look at the males, you can look at their belts. They are all wearing dark brown belts with only simple buckles. No fancy symbols or decorations should be on the belt. For example, no, absolutely no buckles with skulls, um, buckle bigger than the width of the belt, and no cloth belts. If you also look behind me here, hopefully you can see their shoes. They are wearing dark brown shoes and dark brown socks. No sneakers or sports footwear. Socks should be at least two inches above the ankle. No alterations whatsoever should be made to the uniform. That is pants, and shirt must not be stitched in and i always say this to the new students there are two things that fit a pants the waist of the pants and the length of the pants everything else is fashion and the school does not tolerate fashion or facilitate fashion rather there should be no coughing of the foot of the pants or no alteration to it is permitted also if you look on their haircuts boys must be well groomed clean shaven with short neatly combed hair there should be no braiding patterns style and plaiting of the hair hair must not be colored processed creamed jerry curl etc the hair must be on one level so when he goes to the barber schoolboy haircut hairstyle and grooming for all students and then i'll hand over to denisha there should be no tattoos of any sort including marking of the skin with pens and markers so students we're asking you please do not mark your skin with pens and markers there should be no shaving of the eyebrows 
or the use of eyebrow pencil right no bleaching of the skin no lip gloss whatsoever and there are no markings should be on your fingernails and the fingernails need to be cut so those of you who know the style or the fashion of growing out your nails that is a no-no here i will now hand over to denisha so good morning again everyone so i'll now be addressing the dress and deportment for females especially our new students right so as females and as students of the glenmere high school we implore you to have the utmost best in your dress and deportment so for the hairstyle as females there should be no hair extensions, no braiding of any sort, and no wigs or anything of the sort. There should be no excessive hair accessories. These include beads. So for all the persons who have in beads, that's a no-no at Glenmere High School. And Miss Holmes down there, she will be the one walking around and telling you no, 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 no. Right? So you, you are all polished students. That's what we want at Glenmuir. So you're only allowed to wear simple ribbons or bows where necessary, but no beads and no hair extensions. So the uniform now, you should be wearing a white Peter Pan colored blouse, right? With a maroon tunic, a maroon pleated tunic as seen being demonstrated in front of you. Also, the belt buckles, they should be buckles and not hooks. So parents, when you're going to the dressmaker, when you're sending your child to the dressmaker, get, let them get the hooks, the, the butt as you were, the buckles and the not the hooks. The uniform, the tunic itself, should be at least four inches below the knee. Once again, that's four inches for the tunic below the knee. You should wear, yes, four inches. You should be wearing white, the females wear white nylon stocking. As you were, socks, white nylon socks that should be two inches above the ankle when folded. And they must be folded at all times. Shoes. We should be wearing black shoes. Understood? Black shoes. So we don't want to see the brown. We don't want to see any other color, but black shoes. And of course, you know that you're supposed to polish your shoes. And if it can shine, shine it a little bit to ensure that you look your best. Once again, as Shamir said, no long nails. Please clip and properly groom your nails. As it relates to jewelry, I know that some primary schools allow you to wear a little earring or so. That's a no-no at Glenmere High School. The only jewelry that is allowed is a simple watch. The watch band must be maroon, black, red, brown, gold, silver, or white. So no, no other color, no yellow, no green, nothing of the sort. Stick to the school colors. And that's it for the females. Thank you very much. As it relates to the moral aspect, we'll be expounding on that a little bit. All right, so good morning, everyone. So as you have just heard, you heard about the physical aspect of our Glamour High School uniform. However, there is, of course, the moral aspect of our uniform. Now, being able to wear the Glenmere High School uniform is a privilege and an achievement in itself. As such, students have a responsibility to wear this uniform with respect and pride. Being found in compromising situations, displaying uncouth behavior, and degrading the value of the maroon drab is a no-no. The uniform is the primary symbol of the school and what it represents so the onus is on you students to represent your school well on several occasions individuals have expressed their level of admiration for the way how glenmere students wear their uniform it is often said that we have a glenmere walk indicative by or prestigious steps and a glenmere talk that can be heard from a mile away students parents and guardians we need your support to, to uphold our school's honor and to enhance the copacetic operation of this hub of excellence today we implore you to maintain the traditions and standards worthy of our noble institution so we can proclaim flagrant veritatis studio 
burning with the zeal for truth. Thank you. Apologies, we forgot to speak about the apron. So for the persons who will be doing FCM, which is Family Consumer Management, and that's both boys and girls, they'll be required to have a white apron. It must be strictly white, no colored trimmings, as well as a white hair tie. This can be either a chef's hat, a hair napkin, or a hair net. So this is a must have. Also, we don't have any models with the PE uniform at this time, but you will see them in the handbook and you can get copies of a pattern from the admin office, I think, Doc? Yes. In, and it's also in your package. Thank you. A bright flag runs greetings to Glenmuir family. Flag runs greetings. The response is flag runs. So let's go again. A very bright flag runs greetings to you, Glenmuir family. Can we do it one more time? That never sounds so bright. A bright flag runs greetings to you, Glenmuir family. All right, that is sounding much better. Could I get a little bit more volume, please? It is my pleasure, and you will notice that I can barely stop smiling. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce to you a past student, a past student who has taken the time to fly to Jamaica. She has taken the time to drop in this morning because she so represents what we hope that you first formers are going to become. We are hoping that after five or seven years with us, you will continue to think of your school and to come up with creative ways to give back. I am going to invite Ms. Charmaine Lewis, one of my batchmates from class of 84, who is now a proud author, in addition to the many things that she has accomplished since leaving Glenmere High School, she is now an author. And she has popped by this morning to officially donate copies of her latest book to the school. I am very proud to give to you Charmaine Lewis. Please come, Charmaine. Good morning, Glenmere family. Good morning. I need a little. Thank you. <laughs> Still short. <laughs> it is my extreme pleasure to be here with you all today. Dr. Smalling, distinguished guests, parents, and students, old and new. I, my heart is just bursting with joy and gratitude. It wasn't too long ago that we stood right about where that lady is in the red pants, singing Climb Every Mountain as we exited this beautiful institution. New students, do not be scared. Trust me, it's a lot of work, but you have the heart. The fact that you made it here means you're gonna make it all the way. And you too will be able to return and offer back to the school as, um, as we all strive to do. Um, I just wanted to give a little recap as to my time here. 
I was and always will be one hour, <laughs> one hour forever. <laughs> Guys, forgive me. <laughs> but, um, and our teachers, our principal at the time, we were honored to have the last of Dr. Scott um, made our days here full of learning, but we also managed to have fun. I remember having I Steadford. I remember um, just flat out netball and that competi the competition for honors. Oh my Lord, it was on and popping back then. <laughs> we want you to still do that today. Um, I'm just gonna give you a quick little story. I remember always working hard, doing my best, and you know, always coming in the top three. Boy, by the way, Dr. Smalling, I don't know if we can talk about a blazer. <laughs> but yes, I was always striving for top three, top three. And one, one Easter term, I just decided, man, me tired in a man, so I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to do so. I'm not going to do my usual. I'm going to relax a bit. Boy, when I did exams and held up my head after it, the dust settled. Tenth place. I think even Pat Run left me that year. And I decided no, 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 no. Never again. So I was right back at it for summer term, which ties into what our illustrious students were saying. We have to stay at it. It's, um, it may look like a long journey, but just have in your mind your goal set that you will cross this stage and you will do it. By the grace of God and your efforts, you're going to make it through. And this morning, for this, uh, these moments, I just want to honor the school with these two. Very proud of them. They're my first efforts. I'm a new author, still a little bit scared, <laughs> but I'm stepping out in faith, and I want to honor the school with these. They'll be available in the school library, and I am making a push, a bid to the Ministry of Education to try and get them into curriculums nationwide. So um, these are uh, Blue Ho'opono, which is a story of a Jamaican family as it deals with struggles of everyday life across the 19th century. You will see here references to old Jamaican practices that some of we've probably now forgotten, like what you, what you, what uh, John Kono was like, not that we've forgotten that, but even going further, what weddings were like back in those days. The family history is all here. This is, um, I take great pride and pleasure in presenting these two ladies. Good morning, Glenmere High School family. I've always believed that a book is a gift that one opens again and again. So I want to thank Ms. Charmaine Lewis, illustrious past student, doing very well as an author. And of course, we are going to be including this as a part of our library collection. We have many students who are avid readers, and I'm sure that they will enjoy reading your book. Thank you so much on behalf of the school. Thank you so much. And what Charmaine was too modest to mention is that she has other books in the series coming out. So you know that we'll keep on top of that. Thank you so much, Ms. Deona Holmes, head of our English department, for collecting um, those books for our school. Moving right along, we're going to now be having our cadet drill. And let me tell you, the cadet corps is one of the earliest clubs or activities that we've had here at Glenmuir High School. Oh, 
All right. Um, the student head, the head of the cadet corps going into the new academic year is Sergeant Joshim Henry. And they just wanted to give you a little demonstration this morning of a little bit of what the cadets do. And young men coming in, young ladies coming in, we are promoting the cadets. It's a wonderful activity for discipline. And of course, if you're thinking of a career later on in the JDF or so, the cadet is where you will want to be. And so, all right, they're just setting up quickly. Just give me the signal, cadets, when you're ready to go. All right, so good morning again, everyone. We are introducing to you a fraction of the Glenmuir High School cadet unit. Right, so for all the persons, as Mrs. Miko said, who are interested in joining the Jamaica Defense Force, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the Fire Brigade, whatever military operation, or if you are interested in just some adventure, then the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force is for you. The Jamaican Combined Cadet Force is a youth movement with a difference. And by extension, the Glenmuir High School Cadet Unit, a youth movement which falls under the direct responsibility of the Ministry of National Security, Law Enforcement, Forensics and Protective Security Division. The JCCF provides training to the nation's youths, giving them a feeling of stability and purpose. If you're looking for a bit of stability and you're trying to find a purpose, the Glenmuir High School Cadet Unit. The military-based training is aimed at challenging the imaginations of youngsters, as well as to channel their energies into developing a well-rounded and world-class citizen equipped with leadership, man management, and life skills, all valuable to civilians and soldiers alike. I present to you the Glenmuir High School Cadet Unit. So it seems as if the cadets are getting themselves in order. So in the meantime, I'll give, just, just give you a bit of information on the training that we offer. So training in the Jamaica Combined Cadet Force involves, but not limited to, aeronautics, that is air engineering and the whole works, flying a helicopter, doing simulations. It also involves marine training, which includes swimming, kayaking, ditching, and learning to tie different knots. There is also skills training. There is drill, which, which you'll see in a moment, which aids in developing one's alertness, unity, and authority. There is section leading. There's also weapons training, which includes shooting competitions and weapon safety activities. There is also map reading, field craft, music training, first aid, and close quarter combat, which includes self-defense, karate, and boxing. And yes, these are offered to all our cadets. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Glenmuir High School Cadet Unit. Ladies and gentlemen, what you see before you today is a fraction of our first formers and our second formers. Last year, these students were in your position. They were sitting right here. And they have decided to take on the responsibility of joining the Glenmere High School Cadet Unit. And they, I am proud to say, I have been pushing on and pushing forward. They are determined to be extremely well-rounded citizens of Jamaica.
ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we stand before you today to reach out to young minds. Our cadets carrying out this drill display, as said before, was in your shoes last year. And here they are, ready to rise, to reflect, to impact, to serve and to evolve. This is your call to be among the chosen few of our illustrious legacy, boasting some of the best island-wide sharpshooters, number one drilling unit in the island, your school's head boy, deputy head boy, and deputy head girl. If you are interested in being a member of this beacon of excellence, speak to any one of the persons you see before you after dismissal. Join us as we continue to rise. Jongti serviendo de simos, to unite, to serve, to lead. Here we see Sergeant Martin M, or, or head boy, and Sergeant Weir M, or deputy head boy. Give them a round of applause as they march out. Now back to our young cadets on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, the Glenmuir High School Cadet Unit. Thank you, Denisha. I was there sitting and wondering if it is too late for me. Is there an age requirement for the cadets? Seriously, batchmates, I think I might have missed a very important opportunity. Oh, well, oh, well. Um, cadets, remember you have a little duty to do quickly. Cadets, remember the little duty. Thank you so much. Could you just come and do that? So we're moving right along, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're now going to have the symbolic presentation of the six core values. Um, could you just what we're going to be having now is a symbolic presentation of the six core values that we most revere here at Glenmuir High School. Our six core values have been proudly displayed right here in the auditorium, three on one side, three on the other, right under the watchful eyes of our founder, Lord Bishop of Jamaica, the right excellent, the late Percival Bishop Gibson and on the watchful eye of our founding principal Dr. Scott after whom this auditorium in which you sit is named you see here at Glenmuir we're big on history and first foremost we are entrusting you the legacy of continuing the history of excellence and so we have come up with these six core values, which we proudly display on our school flag. The six core values are represented by six diamonds on our school flag, which we place strategically over a burning flame, because we believe in burning always with a zeal for truth. 
have six standard bearers this morning who will be reflecting, representing each core value. The cadets will now take the symbolic lights down to the back where our core value presenters are waiting. And as these lights are brought forward, I will quickly tell you what each value means. So little ones coming in, we're going to expect that you are going to live up to these values. And that when you leave, when you graduate, you are class of 2027 doc. When you graduate, you're going to take these six values with you wherever you go. All our core values are important, but it is the respect that we always highlight first. And so, this morning, walking in with the respect torch, we welcome Mrs. Colleen Chano McKenzie, former head of the history department, long retired but still looking so fresh, my former teacher, my former mentor. Mrs. Colleen McKenzie walking in with the light of respect. At Glenmuir, we preach the gospel of respect first of yourself, respect of the uniform, respect of each other, your peers, your teachers, all staff members, ancillary, administrative, once you come through the gates in the morning, you make sure that you're wearing your respect. Now we invite Mrs. Hyacin Tugman, a stalwart business teacher, now retired, and she walks in with the torch representing our core value of responsibility. one the responsibility is going to be yours to do well to be punctual to attend school regularly to have on the correct uniform all of that is going to be your responsibility it is a serious thing we're talking about this morning respect responsibility mrs heising tugman looking well and God blessed. At Glenmuir, we're very proud of our past teachers, those who have served and who have set the foundation. And we're really happy to have our teachers with us. And we move on to the third core value, trustworthiness, being represented this morning by Mrs. Grace James, former head of the mathematics department. You're looking at a lady with a sharp mind sharp mind and you know when I saw her come through the gate I thought to myself I want to be a Grace James looking fabulous this morning holding the light of trustworthiness your word must mean something little ones if you say you're going to do it do it and if you did it even if it's something wrong you have to admit it. You have to admit it. He who hides the wrong he does, does the wrong thing still. And parents, we're going to ask you, just help us to drill that one, please. You find something that is lost, you bring it to the office. All right? Trustworthiness. Please just put the, put the candle, put the lights down, please. Put the lights down. Thank you so much. And a quick announcement, some students are flicking on the lights that you have in your hands. It's not yet time. So if you flick on and the battery goes, you know that you're not going to be a part of that special thing coming up. So please do not flick on the lights. Just hold it in your hand. Hold it in your hand. All right. 
Our fourth core value, fairness. We invite Mrs. Beverly McKenzie. And I know Mrs. McKenzie was very excited when she saw the cadets, because she's a former cadet. Oh, Mrs. McKenzie, so good to see you. She gave decades of service to the science department, another bright mind. And this morning, she represents fairness. We try to be fair here at Glenmuir High School. It's an equal playing field. Everybody has a place. Everybody has a voice. In the same breath, we don't allow anybody to dominate. Everybody is important, all right? So it's a level playing field, no matter what community you're from or what your parents own. We are fair and we're gonna expect you to be fair also. Thank you so much. Mackenzie. Our fifth core value, caring, and we deliberately chose a male, Mr. Warren Green, a multiple parent, meaning that he has had several children pass through. Uh, his daughter was a part of the cadet drill a while ago, and he's also my batch mate, Mr. Warren Green, representing caring. Parents, we want you to know that when you send your children to us every morning, we're going to take care of them. And we're going to teach them to take care of themselves and each other. If there are problems, please encourage them to talk to us. We care at Glenmuir. Thank you so much, Mr. Green. Outstanding parents. And our final core value, Citizenship, represented this morning by teacher, Unique Sergeant. She, oh. She is a member of the Physical Education and Sports Department, specially chosen this morning because she's an outstanding form teacher at the first form level. Yes, when the babies come in, she nurtures them, she cares for them. Citizenship, we teach you because we want you, we expect that when you leave the Glenmere High School, you are going to become outstanding citizens and your names are only going to be called for good things. And so citizenship rounds up our six core values. You will notice that the song that is playing in the background is Through the Years, specially chosen because our values have not changed throughout the years since Glamour started in 1958. We beg you parents, we beg you babies coming in. It is going to be now your responsibility to keep these values going through the years. Wanna can't clap me now, you know. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, teachers, for our honor look so good. Thank you so much. And we're going to slide right now into the ceremonial lighting and passing of the torch. Ooh, I'm so excited. So Mr. Christie, Tawera, Khalil, I'm gonna ask you to take your positions up as you were instructed earlier on. Why do we make such a big deal about the torch lighting ceremony? Because Glenmere is a flame. Every Glenmerite is a flame. Number one, because God made you a flame. So from the moment that you were created in your parents' womb, God decided that you were going to be light. And at Glenmuir, we promote this light. And so, symbolically, we are going to be having the torch lighting ceremony. Our cadets are coming now. This is a highlight of our welcome ceremony every year. 
where we symbolically have a past student, an outstanding past student of yesterday year, hand over the flagrant torch. Cadet Martin, could you? Oh, Doc is sending the torch down. And the past student from yesteryear will present the torch to a current student, a current outstanding student, who will then hand over the torch to the student who is entering Glenmuir this year with the highest scores, our matriculant. So that is how we pass it on. All right? So we're just setting that up now. What is our motto? What is our school motto? School motto? I can hear you. Flagrance Veritati student. It means burning zeal for truth. So we're lighting the torches. I like this part of the ceremony. I like this part. to continuously keep the flagrant flame of excellence ablaze. Our chief torchbearer, Mr. Christie, will now give his exhortation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Tawira, as the chief torchbearer this year, I charge you to uphold the excellence. As we said, the, this is the hub of excellence. It is. And uh, there is no doubt. It is now in record that this is the number one school. It is. So I charge you to uphold all the facets academically, 
sports, spiritually, morally, and the arts. I charge you with this flagrance for a Tartis studio. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. I, Tower Williams, on behalf of the current students of the Hub of Excellence, welcome you to this new leg of your academic journey and charge you to uphold all the great qualities that we revere. Do so courageously and with all your hearts, knowing that we stand ready to support you. Take this flagrant flame of excellence and keep it burning. Good morning, good morning, everyone. I, Khalil Hawks, on behalf of my peers, accept the flagrant flame of excellence with supreme pride. It is our, it is our of. It is, our it is our avowed intent to consciously, consciously build on the rich legacy of Glenmuir High School by embracing its vision, mission, and core values. We further pledge that we will represent the Flagrant brand in everything we do and wherever we go, always supporting ourselves at the highest standards, demonstrating our passion for learning and excellence in academics, co-curricular activities, and citizenship. Class of 2027, we charge loyalty, honesty, and perseverance, which thousands of students who have entered this school before you have demonstrated. And at this time, we're going to ask all our incoming students. I know a few might not have gotten a torch, but somebody beside you has a little candle. Could you now light your candles? Light your candles. And you're going to hold your candles high. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna 
may your candles always shine and unfortunately babies you're going to have to give back those candles all right so hold on to it a little bit more we are now going to have the torch symbolically placed right in the middle of our core values so a cadet just one a cadet will come and take the torch from you This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. We are coming down to the close, and we must say we are ready to rise. So I'm just going to ask our students, our pep scholars, you're going to say after me, I am ready to rise. After two, all right, so after two, one, two. I am ready to rise. To our parents, I am ready to rise. Teachers and administrators, I am ready to rise. I am ready to rise. And just about everybody, I am ready to rise. Indeed, I must say this was an awesome morning and we give God all the praise and all the glory. But all good things must come to an end. And so at this time, I just want to express thanks to all the persons you were invited here, especially invited guests uh, or students parents um, to our technician on the floor i must say thanks to mr larry jones a teacher thanks to mr stewart also a teacher our choir director or cadet team thank you so much for being here today and the day would not have been you know it would not have been good without you and so we say thank you for being here and so students or new parents and returning parents you are finally here but you have not yet arrived Sounds contrary, right? So you are finally here, but you have not yet arrived. So what is Miss saying? You have successfully completed your primary level of education, but the secondary years will begin. And so for the next five to seven years, you will be exposed to a new level of difficulty, a new level of challenge. And so just like any game that you play, let me see all the gamers in the house. Don't be afraid to hold up your hand. All the gamers, right, whether it's puzzles or, you know, the video games, etc. And so as you advance to a new level, it comes with a new challenge, right? And it's the same thing for your high school years. As you advance, you will meet on a new challenge. And so for many persons, high school, high school has been their best years. I can say that for sure. High school, the best years of your life. And so I hope for you too.
All right, so as our cadets exit the stage. All right, so we do hope that your high school years will be the best years of your life as you will explore new interests, you will try new things, and overall contribute to the growth and development, not only to yourselves, but to Jamaica. Amen? Amen. All right, at this time, just before we close, I have the final giveaway. Final giveaway. Anybody like surprises? Anybody like gifts? All right, so listen up. Um, in the introduction, I did introduce um, those parents who have multiple children coming to this school. And so if we have any parent at this time, you would have had the most children. Is it current or current? The most children currently enrolled at Glenmere High School. Do we have any parent? Two children, three children, probably four. I see a hand upstairs. I see a hand. All right, can we hear the number? Two. Anybody can be the two, anybody else? I see two. Two. Or uh, says it's uh, two. Three. Anybody beating the three? Three. All right, so it seems like Miss at the back with three children currently at Glenmere High School, you will receive um, a prize. Can we give her a lovely hand? All right, and finally, I hope you are listening also to another parent. So the first parent to come up and give me three of our core values, you will also receive a prize. First parent to come up, and first parent to come up. Okay. Good morning, everyone. One is trustworthiness, two is fairness, and three is respect. All right, thank you. So you will collect your prize. Just at the side right there. All right, so we will be closing with our school song. And, you know, just a little information about her school song. It was written by Danae Greaves and Ewan Simpson for the commemoration of her 50th anniversary. And so it's very dear to us, very special. And so as our choir, their position, you will stand. And it's on your program. It's on the back of your program. Semper Flagrance. All right, so audience, you can stand with me. And if you don't know the song, you're going to learn it because we will be singing this throughout, right? So we sing at devotion, we sing at our special events, our special song.
For those parents who have not yet um, registered, Mrs. Mitchell is at the back of the auditorium. She's kindly asking you to stop and ensure that you register your attendance. And for those of you who have not yet collected your packages, you may do so at the administrative office right after this. All right, before you leave, just before you leave, just some few, uh, few announcements. Can you listen, please? Before you move, before you leave, can you just stop and listen? Thank you. All right, so from the science department, the science workbook, it's available only at our bookshop, and so you're asked to go ahead and make your purchase for the science workbook. Also, for the school uniform, the material, it's $300 per yard. Aprons today, special for $1,002. The uniform blouses, they're also available, size 12, size 14, 16, and 10, at different costs. And so you can go to the classroom 1H, right on our first form block, to make your purchase for the school uniform. Thank you. Let it shine. 